So sometimes you'll do a job for somebody and you know from the start you're never going to get paid for doing that job. We are entering heating season. Loads of people are turning their heating systems on and realising either radiators aren't getting warm, there's an issue with the boiler, they haven't given me enough information. Disconnect all this, go through this, work out what's what. So yeah, it's been a bit of a pain. We'll take this one off, trace it back to zone one, connect it into there. And that's your flow per litres per minute going through the system. They will give you the optimal settings for those to be on. We've got heat coming through everything. That's the utility kitchen. And then also, which is nice, is this entrance hall and toilet area inside here. There we go. We'll take this out and then that's just broke off. As I said to you, I know full well I'm not getting paid for doing this job. And the reason being is, Welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody is doing okay. First of all, I want to welcome so many new subscribers to the channel. In the last two weeks, the subscribers of the channel have really shut up. So a massive thank you to everyone that has now got on board with the channel. If you're new to the channel, I'm Mark. MJ Tiff Plumbing and Heating. Real world plumbing is what this channel is all about. As people know that have watched it for a long time, I show everything from when it goes right to when it goes wrong everything in between so yeah hope you enjoy the channel thanks for getting subscribed hit the like button on all the videos and uh, hopefully we'll hit that 40k by the end of the year this video is a good one i think because we're now coming out of well we're out of summer into autumn weather's changing slightly heating systems are coming on and people are having problems with them so this one's an interesting one we've got um, a little bit of an issue with an underfloor heating and we've got as you'll have seen from the trailer at the start We've got a job where I knew I wasn't going to get paid for this job, but I still went and done it. So keep an eye on it. Let me know what you think. As always, drop a comment. Let me know. Give me a bit of feedback. Would you have charged this? Would you have charged this person for this job? Let me know in the comments below. Hope you enjoy the video and I'll catch you soon. So sometimes you'll do a job for somebody and you know from the start you're never going to get paid for doing that job. This is exactly the scenario I've got here. Let me take you through and show you what the problem is. And then at the end, I can tell you why I'm not going to get paid for doing this little job. So this is the problem. I'm going to see if I can replicate it. I bet I'm not going to be able to. It is basically a noisy valve. It just happens, you have to do it the very slightest little way and it will trigger it. Let me flush it. Take a little bit of water out of it, not too much. I know it's water to do it. See what? It's not going to do it, is it? I'm not going to be able to make it do it. It basically, the washer inside there is moving that quick, it's causing a huge humming noise and like a oh, real harsh noise. A few moments later. There we go. There we go. And it is when the valve is just about to shut off there. So, there's two solutions. There's one, replace the whole thing, or two, replace the washer inside here. So I'll go and get the washer kit and see if by replacing the washer, that's if I've got the right one for this, this uh, valve. I'm not sure if I have. If not, it's fairly straightforward to swap that out anyway. Turn it off there, undo it there. We've got the Aquavac here ready. But let's try, see if we can do it that way, because so many people comment, just change the washer. Got these from Thomas Dudley anyway. That's not a problem. Let's try that. So we'll move the Thomas Dudley Hydrofo first. Get the water turned off here. All right, so flush it, and then with the water turned off, we can unscrew. If we can get it off. It's always tight. There we go. Let's unscrew 
this valve off. Careful, you're not going to drop anything down. So if we take this out and then, uh, <laughs> that's answered that there, that's just broke off. So even if we wanted to, oh look, it's that brittle. Even if you wanted to change this washer, it's not going to work now. Oh, there's the problem. It's not going to work now because that's broken. But we could have just changed that washer for a new one. Let's see if I have one in the kit. Yeah, we've got loads of them here. So we could have changed it. However, now with the valve actually broken, got to change the whole part. So it's a good job I did bring one. We're going to fit the Thomas Dudley Hydroflow in. So with the water turned off, we'll get the Aquavac in here. Get as much out as we can. Get the Aquavac in here, get the water sucked out, and then get the valve out. <laughs> With that out, we can now go underneath here, undo the swivel and undo the back nut there. Let's get that off. So while trying to get this back nut off, we just get a little bit of blue roll underneath there. I think every plumber has some blue roll knocking around just to catch a little bit of water that comes out. And as you can see from the bottom of that valve, that's an old plastic bottom entry valve. So. At least with the new Thomas Dudley one, we're going to have a brass bottom. There we go, pop a new fresh washer on there and get the valve in from the top. Now guide that through, you can see the brass shank coming out the bottom, and then get the nut onto the bottom there. And you sort of got to tighten it all in one, so as you're tightening that nut in to pull the valve down, you've also got to get it onto that pipe as well because that's sort of a fixed point. So with that in, tightened up, we can then get the swivel tightened up on the bottom with our new fibre washer and we should be good to go. So that's the new Hydro valve in. Let's get the water turned on and check that we're all good. We can adjust the levels of the valve there, but I've matched that up to the existing one that was in, so we know that's there or thereabouts, so it should be water line. Right, there we go, noisy toilet, done, dusted, fixed. But as I said to you at the start of this uh, little bit of the video, I know full well I'm not getting paid for doing this job. And the reason being is, you might have clocked it, you might not. It was at Unilite HQ. Obviously Unilite sponsored the channel, so I can't really charge them for doing that. I'm sure a few of you will say, yeah, of course you can. But to be honest, they look after me anyway. So, little freebie for Unilite. As always, if you want to pick up any Unilite gear, use my code MJTIFF, gets you 25% off anything from Unilite. I always have the lights with me. That one, there's a few in the van, as you know. So yeah, use my code MJTIFF, all the links are in the description below. But yeah, little freebie for Unilite. We are entering heating season. Loads of people are turning their heating systems on and realizing either radiators aren't getting warm or there's an issue with the boiler or they haven't used it all over the summer and their mid-position valve, the diverter valve's playing up, pumps playing up, whatever. I must have had two or three phone calls this week alone with people turning the heating on. I've got a flush to go and look at and I also got called out to this one. Now this one is a job that the guy spoke to me about two or three months ago and said, when, it, when the temperature changes, can you come out and have a look? Because he's not long finished this house project, lovely house, stunning house, and he's had underfloor heating put in on it. He's never had underfloor heating before. He's usually had radiators, with radiators up on the top floor and the middle floor, but down on the ground floor, he's got underfloor heating. It's a snug system. So I'm pretty clued up on it. I know what's going on with it. However, the person that fitted it didn't go through with them and explain how to run underfloor heating, how it works, because it is completely different 
to a radiator system, keeping the ambient temperature at a base level so you're not pulling too much cold out the floor, um, allowing a certain amount of warm up time and also keeping the heating at a, a constant level rather than turn it off and turning it on. Obviously with this floor here, concrete floor, so if it's got, let's say, 50 mil screed or 60 mil screed in it or, or, or concrete floor, the pipe work that's in it has got to heat all that surrounding flooring, screed, before it starts to come through. So it's not gonna be instantaneous. And teaching that or explaining that to a customer is key when they have underfloor heating. Now, I thought this job was gonna be a case of popping in, explaining it to them, or getting it up and running, and that was it. So I didn't bother filming it when I came in. However, it's a little bit more involved with it. They haven't, let me take you in here. When they've done it, they haven't given me enough information or written it down anywhere. There is some writing on the wall, but I'm not sure what that relates to. Time stat-wise and zone valve-wise, actuate head-wise. So I've had to basically disconnect all this, go through this, work out what's what. Um, so yeah, it's been a bit of a pain. However, we have got something coming out that I'm going to put onto this manifold from Snug that is going to be quite interesting. So for now... We're just gonna go round. Because they didn't know how it worked, the time clocks were all different days, different times. Some of them were scheduled to come on and off, some of them weren't. It was just explaining all that. Underfloor heating can be, unless you take the time to learn it and explain it to the customer, it can be a bit of a nightmare. So what I've been doing, I've been going around with the snug stats, setting the times on them, setting a schedule on them, because the customer wants it to come on and off at certain times. So I'm going around, getting all that sorted. Same with this one. I've turned it right up to get the flow into the floor. I've got my thermal imaging camera here so that we can see. Right there, there we go, look. That's the edge of the, the kitchen. It's coming through, but in the little snug area, you can see the pipe work coming through. It just so that I know that they're actually working. That stat, that stat's talking to that actuator, and I now know that that actuator is feeding this ring of pipe work. So it's been a little bit of a um, time-consuming job working out which loop like the kitchen the kitchen is on four loops one here so i've got this one running and then i've turned this middle one off to make sure i've got the right actuator in there connected to the right stat for the right loop if that makes sense so the middle one's off and then the end one's on so it is pretty time consuming but i want to I want to get it all sorted and then take the time to explain it to the customer in layman's terms how these time clocks work. They are these snug ones really are simple, but if you're completely new to it, it does take some explaining. So I want to get my head around it first, make sure everything's running right, stats are working, pumps working, the viewing glass side of it is throttled down to where it needs to be, and then as I said, we've got something coming for that manifold. So I'm going to sort, I was going to spend the rest of the day here sorting this out and then hopefully tomorrow when the new bits arrive, I'll show you exactly what it is. So I'm back on this underfloor heating job now. I did say we had something coming for this manifold and it is the new style snug underfloor heating actuator heads. We're going to replace all of these on here because these are the new ones that are coming out. As you know, I work quite closely with Snug, so we're going to pop these on, see what they're like, and then we can feed back to Snug some info on them. On the front, as you can see, you've got an NO and an NC, so you've got normally closed and normally open, and then when the valve is open, this little red bit here will go up, obviously, and when it's normally closed, it'll stay down. So what we've got to do is switch out all these heads now, We'll pop the cover off the front. I will knock the power off to it. But what I'm going to do is replace one at a time. So we'll take this one off, trace it back to zone one, remove it out of there, pop the new one on, connect it into there. And then what I will do is pop zone one on the top there and so on and so forth all the way down. Then when that's done, we know all the valves are working fine. We know all the stats are working fine. And then we can go around then and finally start setting this system up for the customer. Spend the time explaining exactly how it works and how the most efficient way to have underfloor heating set. But first off, let's get these switched out. So with the power off to the unit, I'll talk you through the first one that I'm gonna swap out. It is a case of just undoing it off the manifold, like so. 
if you just push down a little bit onto it, it comes off. So we'll undo that one off the manifold and then we'll trace it up here to this cable. And then we pop off that. Uh, we'll put the screw up there. And then which one was it? This cable here. So here you go. So you've got blue and brown, blue neutral, brown live, just goes into zone one port there. So it's a case of unscrewing that, taking that one out, putting the new one in, refitting it on there, refitting it on the manifold, and then the same for all the other ones along there. Let's get it done. So with that new cable connected into zone one, you just refit the head like so onto the manifold like so job done then we can move on and get the rest of them done so it is a fairly straightforward job it's just disconnecting the actuator heads off the manifold tracing the cable up swapping out the live and neutral in each zone and connecting it back in just making it nice and neat and don't forget, as you're going along, always mark up the actuator heads as you go along. It just makes life a whole lot easier. So going into the winter, setting these up, getting your underfloor heating, even your central heating set right, you know, one of the best things you can do to save money, especially with heating bills going up. But if you like that little bit of information, hit the like button. Hitting the like button in these videos makes a huge difference. So hit the like button, get subscribed to the channel, drop me a comment below. Let me know what heating system you use, RADS, underfloor heating. Be interesting to hear just what people are running out there. And because we've got loads more content about stuff like this coming into the winter. So let's go around now and show you exactly how this heating system is working in the four different zones. Don't worry about that. I'm gonna get some zip ties around that and get that sorted before we go. Right, we've got all the new actuator heads put on top of the manifold now. And I've also written on the top zone one, zone two. But if you look on the front where those little gauges are, you can see it's now calling for heat or not calling for heat. Well, to be fair, they're all calling at the minute, which is good. And then what I've also done along the top here is the sort of the lock shield side of the underfloor heating manifold. So we can turn these down or open them up. If you look at that one, you've got zero, one, two, three, four, and that's your flow per liters per minute going through the system. So. What it is, when Snug design a system, they, I don't know where it is, it's not here, but when Snug design a system, they will give you the optimal settings for those to be on. So, for instance, you can turn this one up to two litres a minute, or if you turn it down, drops it down to one. So what I'm going to do is balance them all out so that they are all perfect, but to be honest, it's not too bad at the minute. I've got the thermal imaging on, so that is our manifold at the minute. All of them are open, and what we have now got, now I've been around, set all the touch panels is we've got heat coming through everything that's the utility kitchen all the way across into the far side before i don't think the wiring was too good i think some of them were pulled out but because we changed the valves the new snug ones were good as gold and then the snug and then also which is nice is this entrance hall and toilet area the inside here but what they want, what the customer wants, is this entrance hall to come on at sort of five, hour five in the morning so that this is nice and warm. Being tiled on the floor, obviously you're going to get the cold coming through your feet. So they want that to come on. <clears throat> so they want that to come on early in the morning so that when you come down, your feet are nice and toasty. So yeah, that's just about it. And then what I've got to do is just go through with the customer on these snug stats and they are so easy to work if you want to go in holiday mode you just press holiday brings up you can set your holiday so say you book a holiday now you can set that and then you can go on holiday not worry sat on the plane the heat is going to come on and all that sort of stuff but it's got things like humidity temperature yeah these snug stats are really good so i'm going to go through them stats with the customer so that they know exactly how their underfloor heating system works best way to optimize it, best way to get the house nice and warm going into the winter.